Hello everyone. On this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to uh, handle exceptions in ASP.NET. So for this tutorial, I'll be using Visual Studio 2019 ASP.NET Web API. It's just a quick, uh, fast example, and C# -sharp to show you, you know, the code and how to, you know, how to get it, how, how to get you set up. Okay. So just to to get to be clear here. Um, there are multiple ways to handle exceptions on .NET and ASP.NET. Um, you can just, uh, pretty simple, easy ways, just set up a try-catch. Uh, those are kind of local uh, exceptions. But on this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to handle like global exceptions. Okay. All right. Let's get started. Okay. First, uh, first thing I'm going to do is create a new project. I'm gonna name it ASP.NET. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just pick uh, ASP.NET application. Click next and name it Global Exceptions. Uh, out of all these options, I'm gonna go ahead and click Web API. I'm just gonna run the Web API just to make sure it works. Uh, make sure the controllers are working. So I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna put a. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna put a breakpoint here on home. Run it. I want to make sure this controller actually runs. Okay. So yeah, it's hitting it. So the web API it's up and running. Let's go ahead and close it. So next step is let's go ahead and create or let's go ahead and close it. Next step is let's go ahead and create a new class. You can put a class anywhere you want. I like to put my classes on models. Add a new class, uh, call it a class. This is where you're gonna, this is where all your exceptions are gonna go, right? So I'm just gonna put exception. Exception filter attribute that's what we're calling it right the class click add once the class is created we need to include exception filter attribute okay because this is basically creating a filter for the controller so every time we run the web api and either controller either home or values every time it, we hit that it, the this this controller we need this attribute to get triggered if there's an exception okay all right let's go ahead and so now the very first thing is we need to override the on exception so we're basically going to be overriding the the, the the on exception okay and we need to pass in http action execute context so let's executed context and then context okay so right click uh just hover if you see this hover go ahead and click uh using uh just go ahead and select using dot web dot http filters <clears throat> okay so the first thing we're gonna do is so all right hold on let's see what's uh what's going on here oh okay all right so i, I guess yeah i named the same thing as a filter so not imp implement not implemented right now implemented execution uh not implemented exception filter attribute okay sorry let's let's go back to his um so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check if there's a uh, context we're gonna ch we are going to check if there is an exception if it's not equals no right this is where Catching the exception. Okay. So 
basically what this is the all right let me let's let's go over what's going on here so i'm creating a class you know i, I named the class uh not implement exception filter attribute okay i make sure i have to include exception filter attribute to make this to make this work on a controller level next i have to create a class that overwrites the on exception the system on exception of uh, uh, function so anytime that any anytime there is a um exception it's gonna throw it here unless if i have a local try catch block right and then on this i have the contact so this is where i'm gonna have the contacts is where i'm gonna have the exception message the type of exception and everything else right so the way to get the exception message all right i'm going just to do a console log so you know a var exception it's going to be uh context dot exception right so here we can have message it's going to be context exception dot message right you can have the message there you can also have inner inner exception right so you, you can see all kinds of information within the, the you know whatever you see oh in one one of the best ones here right so because this is a web uh, application uh, a web api you can have the best one which is the path like where your exception happened right so that's that's really good what controller was you using so context dot request dot request url dot absolute absolute path so this way we know exactly where the error happened so let's say if you log in this on a database or on a text file whatever you log in this you got all this information pretty handy here you can actually put all this in a database and later on if a user comes back to you and say this is not working you can actually track back to whatever this was right all right, so let's run some tests here. Oh, oh, so, so next step is this not implement exception filter attribute. Grab this, make sure you grab this. You can put it either in a home controller or va values, doesn't really matter. And put it right above the controller. All right, hold on. I might have to use the mo mo models, which is the folder that I added, that I created. And here you don't really need the attribute words here. You can just do not implement exception filter. Just right above the controller. Okay. All right. So if you run it the way it is right now, it's going to it's gonna work the same way as before. Nothing's really going to happen. Okay. I'm not even going to even going to put a breakpoint here. Okay. Let's go ahead and put a breakpoint there. And then let's run it again. Let's run it again. I'm going to put a breakpoint there. As you can see, it doesn't trigger and nothing happens. So it's seamless, right? You don't even see unless if there's an exception. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, manually throw an exception so you guys see what the non implemented exception filter really does. Okay, so for this example, I'm just going to put a throw a manually throw an exception right here on the values API. Uh, controller it doesn't really matter which one but let's go ahead and put a breakpoint there run it let's make sure the breakpoint is set here i don't want to yeah i uh, done the filter so now that i'm here i'm just going to hit that so the exception is going to get triggered right now as you can see here system exception parameter cannot be null so what's the next step oh there you go hold on Let's try one more time. Oh, you know what? Actually, we forgot to, we forgot to add the reference of the filter in there. Okay, let's put the reference of the filter in the values. So yes, that's, an, that's a great example. That is a great example of what would have happened if i didn't have this filter here if i didn't have a filter the app itself would just create all right let's go ahead and run it one more time the app itself would just throw an exception and your user or whoever is using it right we just get this 
who just got this on the on their page and you know they won't be able to tell what the error is what the problem is they don't know if what this is right all right so let's go ahead and implement the filter here let's add the filter here so now that the filter is implemented here make sure you reference whatever you created the the, the filter now that the filter is implemented let's go ahead and run it so same thing there we go so the 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 sec exception it's gonna be thrown right now exception it's thrown so it does hit now it did hit the our filter so on this example here it's it's not really gonna do much i just gonna kind of run it through so you guys can see what the exception so exception is parameter cannot be null is there a message so the message is parameter cannot be null is there any exception is no because there's nothing an absolutely absolute path this is what's most interesting here you can actually you can actually figure it out where the error came from what controller we're using for example in this example here it's it's api values right so if even if you go to a uh, request here url the request url here you can get all kinds of information the local host segments there's all kinds of data here you can actually put in a log on a text file on whatever you want so this is all i wanted to show you guys today if you guys have any questions comments or concerns just drop them below thanks for watching guys